Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Eurovision Ireland. You might know us already, but in case you don't, here is John. Hi, folks. Sarah. Hi, everyone. James. Hi, everyone. Richard. Hi, am. And I'm Bogdan. And today we decided to discuss again another national final. And guess what? It's time for Portugal. Festival do Cansao 2017. Now, Festival do Cansao 2017, it was a special one because it had two semifinals, but tonight we're going to discuss about the final, which took place at Coliseu do, dos Recreos. I'm sorry if I say it wrong, but I'm not a Portuguese speaker. It was in Lisbon and it took place on the 5th of March 2017. The show was hosted by Silvia Alberto and Catarina Furtado. And if Catarina Furtado does not tell you something, reminds you of something, yes, you're right. She was the host of Eurovision 2018. So a year later, she was chosen to host the show as well. In the final of Festival de Cansao, eight entries took part. And the winner was determined by a 50-50 combination like the votes from original some regional juries and uh, televoters right now let's get started song number one was Jorge Benvinda with Gente Bestial and to kick off we're gonna have to go to John take it away <laughs> yes take it away indeed yeah I get um song number one Gente Bestial um yeah I'm sorry my, my Portuguese is not that good either, I'm afraid. Um, this is a very interesting opener. And I think he was going to be doomed from the start there, really. Um, he did finish fourth, though. Now, staging. Uh, he got a very eye-catching outfit. It was an interesting jacket and shirt combination. Hmm. And he had a very sort of bright and bouncy sort of backdrop with it. So... This sort of catch your eye immediately. Um, maybe it was a bit of a gimmick. Um, I was a bit concerned that he, he delivered most of the song with his eyes closed. Now, there's a time and a place for doing that, or close your eyes for like the, the dramatic bits, but you generally got to engage with the camera. That, that wins votes. Um, that side, it, it, it bounced along okay, but it didn't really go anywhere. It just sort of <clears throat> first chorus, first chorus the usual stick, but there was nothing to grab you. There's no real hook there just to say, yeah, this is the one that's going to, you know, that's, 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 that's going to win. And so I know it finished fourth, but with what was to come later, I think, yeah, it, fourth was the best he was ever going to hope for. Um, the other thing I've got down here is um, there was a synthesizer sound in it, which, which caught my ear. And it was the sort of thing that you hear in those 1950s B movies, when there's aliens involved, you know, that sort of, <laughs> yeah, um, there was that sort of thing going off as well. So it was all, all together, a very interesting three minutes of song. Um, was I impressed? Well, it was an okay sort of opener, but we knew that was, there was far better to come. Yeah, that's, that's the, the thing when you know already what's happening. When you saw the show, you said, oh, it could have started better, but we had what it, we had. Okay, so we move on to James, who's going to tell us about song number two, which was sung by Pedro Consavales with Don't Walk Away, and it's the only song that has a title in English, with composer Juan Pedro Coimbra. Here you go, James. Oh, thank you. I was smirking a bit then, listening to everyone's attempts at Portuguese. I was like, mine's in English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'll get my turn later. Um, the thing that struck me about Pedro straight away is that he's very young. It was sort of obvious when you look at him, he's a very young performer. And it also came across in the way that he performed. And what I mean by that is it wasn't polished yet. He was very enthusiastic, but I think he sort of needs a bit more time to sort of work in his craft and that goes true of all performers you know you sort of take time to develop that stage persona and that presence and I think he wasn't quite there yet um vocally it felt like he was straining occasionally and the other thing going back to what John said during his song about you know singing with your eyes closed I noticed Pedro doing that an awful lot 
And again, another bugbear of mine, no connecting to the camera. A lot of time he was looking past the camera and again, sort of overacting. And I know some people think that sort of over showing that emotion, you know, you're emoting, but sort of grimacing and gurning can be really off-putting and he was sort of veering more into that. Um, there was a lot going on on stage. I liked the dancers in their red costumes. I thought that was quite eye-catching, but I thought with the sort of flashing background lights as well, it was all a bit all over the place, which is a shame because there were some good elements in there. And yeah, musically, it was inoffensive, sort of a bit of a modern edge to it, sort of general pop. It was likeable, but I did feel like it was a bit of a long three minutes. It felt very repetitive. And yeah, I mean, I know they say performing second at Eurovision is sort of a cursed slot, and I was wondering the same for Festival de Cancel, but... He tried very hard, and I think that's to be commended. But I think he maybe wasn't ready to sort of give him a more polished performance. And I mean, he finished sixth ultimately. And I think that, you know, again, not to knock him for his age, but I think again, if he'd been a bit more mature, sort of more aware of his stagecraft, I think he could have maybe improved on that. Oh, definitely. Maybe we'll see him again. Who knows? And that brings us to song number three, which is Lena Dagua. Nunca me fui en Bora, composer Pedro Silva Martins. And to talk about this song, we have Sarah. Right. Um, there seems to be a bit of a common theme with Portuguese finals. I don't know whether this is always a common theme, so, but it seems to me that like, we quite often get songs that are quite chaotic, um, a little bit shouty. And I felt, and unfortunately, I felt this was what was quite wrong with Lena's song, really. Um, when I first looked at her on stage, I thought, oh, you know, it reminds me a bit of um, Lisa Rangel, who sang for France in 2015 with the black dress. It was, you know, it's bobbed hair, very similar. Um, but unfortunately, that's where it stops, unfortunately, because I felt that Lisa had a lot more finesse, um, to be honest. The staging, I felt, was really dated. It was just reminded me of watching something that I would have been sitting watching with my parents in the 1970s while I was growing up. Um, no doubt about the enthusiasm. The, um, sort of the, and then the vocals were there, but I felt a little bit shouty in parts. And the song for me didn't really go anywhere. It was just sort of, it's a bit similar to uh, what James was saying, really. Um, but you had sort of the sort of the verse, then the chorus, then repeat. And I found myself switching off after a bit. Uh, I think even translating it to English probably wouldn't have helped it much either. Um, I'm actually surprised it qualified for the final. And I'm not surprised it was second to last in the final. That was about the position it deserved. Really. Sorry. Happens. <laughs> we can't all be winners. <laughs> <laughs> which brings us to song number four, which was Salvador Sobral with Amar Pelos Dois, composer, his sister, Luisa Sobral. And I'm going to take the lead for this one. I must say that I was uh, blogging that the, the first semi the semi final that he performed in, so I already knew the performance. But see it again, the, the the final. I had the same feeling of this singer uh, looks kind of I don't know innocent for all throughout all the songs. It's something melancholic about this song. Something very special, but the same time maybe dated but in a good way and I was thinking back then people would either gonna absolutely love it or don't get it at all and apparently people in Portugal and not only in Portugal really got it and yeah it might not have been the most um, wow performance but his gesture his mimics and his conviction sold the song so, yeah, that was Salvador Sobral. And we move on to song number five, which was Fernando Daniel with Poema Ardoish, composer Nuno Feist, Nuno Marquez da Silva. And to tell more about this song, we have Richard. Fernando definitely had strong vocals. And like James said about Pedro, he's very enthusiastic. That's a plus side. 
But when it came to connectivity, I thought that was very questionable. He was like this all the time, he was looking all over the place. So he wasn't looking into the camera like most performers would, or he wasn't looking in, in the direction of the audience. It was just all over the place. I think for five seconds, probably, period, he was looking at the camera, but it just wasn't enough to connect with the audience, either at home or in the theatre. Um, I loved the stringed instruments that were being played behind him. Um, it certainly gave that Portuguese feel about it. And I cannot remember the genre of Portuguese. Is it Fado? Yeah, exactly. It gave yeah. that impression, which I really did like. <clears throat> um, I don't mean to be rude, but it looked like he just walked in off the street because it was like in a casual jacket, jeans and T-shirt. And it just like... He'd just come to perform a karaoke. And if it came to Eurovision, it just sounded too generic. He would not get past that semi-final stage. Okay, good. Now we move on to number six, the song number six, and it's Celinda da Piedade with the song Primavera, composer Celinda da Piedade and Alex Gaspar. And again, we're going back to John to hear his thoughts about this song. Uh, primavera, I believe it means spring. Um, exactly. It's a wild guess there. And yeah. this is far more my sort of thing. It's Portugal with a capital P, just distilled into three minutes of fun. Absolute joy, a joyous delight this was. It's a beautiful song. Um, I mean, Mrs. Selena looks like she's a bit dre dressed a bit like a rose bush, but I, I sort of only made the thing even better. Um, and she's got an accordion. Who doesn't love an accordion? Um, it starts off slowly and you think, oh, this is going to be a proper, proper fardu. And then it kicks up, it, it, it kicks up and it's, it's brilliant. You could, I could imagine it being played, you know, in, in a, a crowded, a crowded bar somewhere in Lisbon's Barra Alto. And this king, this, this comes on, you know, this, this, this comes on as music and people are just singing and drinking and carousing to it. It's just, it's just pure joy. Um, very Portuguese. A very happy song. Um, I admire Portugal for, for plugging away with, with very Portuguese stuff. That they, they, they do they do occasionally veer towards something that's maybe a bit more European mainstream, but I really admire them for, for sticking to Portuguese stuff and you know showing off their own culture because they've got a, a beautiful culture. And this this is just three minutes of pure Portugal. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, disappointed it finished third. I don't think it would have. I think it, sadly, I think it might have sung without trace had it got to Eurovision itself, probably because it is just a little bit too Portuguese. Um, although we did have Salvador. Um, but I would have been a happy bunny if it had gone to Eurovision. But yeah, a cracker of a song. I agree. And we move on to song number seven. Do Linda Kinzimba. <laughs> Okay, and Vina Dos Meus Sonhos. Uh, Rita Red Shoes and Senor Vulsao. And uh, talk about this, we have James. <clears throat> now, I really, really enjoyed this when I listened to it. I thought it's very gentle, very melodic. I love the way that her voice and the music sort of fused. And, you know, she's got an incredible voice, Dale Linda. I thought she did. You know, an amazing job selling the performance. Um, there was some lovely camera work in there. There's that moment where the camera sort of pans around and the audience is behind her and she just sort of like turns and looks quite dramatically down the camera. I like that. A lot of good connectivity as the camera like pans around her looking into it, connecting and like, yes, yes, this is all good. She sings really well. Um, I did like that it sort of had that Fardo quality to it. I really enjoy that. And to echo what John said, you know, it's wonderful that Portugal do sort of, you know, push their traditional music. And I think that's something I'd like to see more countries do at Eurovision. Um, it built quite nicely. The one thing that I sort of, if there was one slight drawback to this song, I felt like it wasn't really something that we hadn't heard before. Sort of, I mean, at both stylistically, you know, a key change you could see coming a mile off. It was a lovely example of something that we've seen many, many times before. Now, ultimately, it finished dead last on the night, which I don't think it deserved because, as I said, I think Dear Linda did an amazing job. She's got a beautiful voice, and I think it was a lovely little package. 
I can only assume that because it feels very familiar that maybe, you know, televoters and juries across Portugal were thinking, you know, well, you know, we've heard stuff like this, it's not really new to us. But I also wonder, you know, running order does play into it a bit and, you know, we're getting towards the end of the night. So I do wonder if it was just the case of, you know, okay, we've seen a lot of other stuff, this is in here too, and it just got lost, which I don't think it deserved to, but unfortunately that's the game. You know, you rank eight songs, one of them's got to come last. Yeah, I agree. And I suppose coming just before the last song, which was Viva La Diva, didn't help either, <laughs> which we're talking about now. Viva La Diva, last song of the night by Nova Gloria and composer Nuno Gonzalez. And to tell us more about this song, we ask, please, Sarah, to give us her thoughts. Yeah. Viva la diva. That's what I really have <laughs> to all this time. This I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to start singing this. So, but I won't. I won't because uh, I, my singing is awful. So don't worry. I won't torture you with that. <laughs> okay. So Viva la diva, Nova Gloria. Now, this song really, really surprised me because when I started to listen, to watch it and listen to it, I thought, it's going to be another power ballad, just in a, an, an ordinary power ballad, probably something very Portuguese. But it actually turned out to be quite a little gem. Um, I love the way that it started off slowly and then all of a sudden, unexpectedly, it just burst into this crescendo of opera singing. So you have the two male opera, two male uh, singers sort of singing solo opera and then joining them together. And it felt really, really quite harmonious. And I was, that really surprised me because this is something... I wouldn't normally expect from Portugal, but it actually worked really, really well. On stage, the vocals were in, in tune and in time. They were in harmony with one another. Yeah, I just loved it. I was just absolutely gripped for the whole three minutes of it. And and not surprisingly, it was the runner-up to Salvador, you know, which, yeah, yeah, I can see why it was. Had it gone to Eurovision, um, it might have got Portugal through to the final. Not sure sort of how it would have done in the final and whether it would have sort of stood up to some of the other stronger entries. That, but I think it would have held its own, maybe just sort of been around about sort of top 10 or maybe just outside. But yeah, I loved it. Thank, thank you, Sarah. So yeah, that concludes all the songs of the night. And as, we, as I told you earlier, there were seven regional juries and they were from North, Central, Lisbon area, Ante Alentejo, Algarve, Azores, and Madeira. And out of all of this, uh, Salvador received five sets of 12 points and two sets of 10 points. So he was almost the favorite in all the regions of Portugal. Mm -hmm. Now we know that Salvador won and he represented Portugal at Eurovision Song Contest 2017. He performed on the first semi final. Uh, in, in the ninth position, and he won that semi final, and then he draw to perform in the in the final in the first half, and the producer decided to put him to perform in the eleventh <clears throat> position. So yeah, the contest, uh, as we saw, uh, was won by Portugal, so by uh, Salvador, with seven hundred and fifty eight points out of which 382 mm -hmm. points were awarded by the juries and 376, mm -hmm. so almost the same amount of points by the televoters. Very convincingly, yeah. Very convincingly. And an mm -hmm. interesting fact, Salvador received points from 39 out of 42 possible international juries. And considering out of the 42, it's actually only 41 because Portugal is one of the 42. So only two countries did, didn't did give points to Portugal. I mean, their juries. And there were Bulgaria and Montenegro. Well, I could say maybe because Bulgaria was one of the favorites, maybe it was something going on there, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I'm just, just saying, just saying, maybe mm -hmm. that's why. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Salvador received points from the televoters from all the countries that participated, which is something that is very special and not can not anyone can do it. So he received points from every single country taking part in Eurovision. And 
the lower set of points you received was five points. And that were, that were from Denmark and Italy. So up to this day, Salvador remains the highest scoring Eurovision winner. And yeah, 758 points will be really tough to beat because you have to receive points from almost all the countries. So yeah. Now the question is, would any other song from Festival du Consort and Discipline could have equaled his performance? Or what do you think, what they would have done? They would have done the same, worse? What are your thoughts? Let's start with John. Yeah, uh, Salvador, um, it's one of my probably top five favorite Eurovision winners of them all. Um, because it just completely booked the trend for, you know, you don't need to sing in English. It doesn't need to be a schlagery song. It can just be a beautiful song with minimal stage and just sung beautifully. And it, it cut right through. And uh, the stats you just reeled off there, Bogdan, just, just completely back it up. Um, it was head and shoulders, probably knees and toes above everything else in that Portuguese final. To be fair, I think. Um I did have a spot, soft spot for Primavera and Viva La Diva had something about it too. Um, anything else in that um, in that national final might have struggled to have got through the semi-final, I'm afraid. Maybe Viva La Diva would because it was just mm -hmm. um, a little bit on the quirky side mm -hmm. and would have piqued people's interests. Um, but... I, I struggle to think how, you know, from a European perspective, how anything else would have qualified from the semi final, but um, they did good. Um, Portugal have put in loads of good stuff over the years and it's just completely, you know, unrecognized and just something without trace. So for, for Salvador to have the record he's got, yeah, only Portuguese winner, biggest winning score ever, that's quite a feather in Portugal's, Portugal's cat, really. Um, he did good, but it was the only one that was would have stood a chance of doing anything at Eurovision at all. Thank you, John. James, what are your thoughts? I agree with practically everything John said. I think every so often a song comes along that captivates everyone, and Amar Pelos Doesh just captivated all of Europe. Um, I mean, as you said, you know, 758 points getting scores from practically every country in Europe and you know he's the highest scoring Eurovision winner and let's face it he's likely to stay that way for quite some time mm -hmm. you know if it's, judging by recent scores you know things have evened out a lot more but you know it was the first time we've had a very strong winner for both the jury and the televote. Mm -hmm. um, going back to Festival de Cancel I think um, Viva La Diva had it gone to Eurovision it might have qualified but I think it would have done a Senora de Mar you know, it would have maybe done quite well in its semi, but put it into a larger pool of songs. And, you know, OK, we also had, you know, Jack Kodak and my friends. So we sort of had an opera sound in there already. Mm -hmm. I mean, OK, it's a very different opera sound, <laughs> to be very honest. <laughs> I sort of do wonder <laughs> things like that, you know, you think every so often something comes along that you think, you know, no, this was the right time. And I think for Salvador, the sort of momentum that built up around him, you know, his story, everything, I think it was just the perfect moment. And that that moment sitting in the hall and, you know, they're sort of reading out the scores and you're thinking, my God, you know, this is history. Portugal have done it. They've not only done it after so many years of, you know, sort of not really doing anything of note, but to do it and to do it with such a plum, it was just fantastic. It's like moments like that, you think this is actually like, you know, a once in a lifetime kind of feeling. And yeah, to echo John, I'd say it's probably one of my favourite favorite winners. And just hearing the sort of opening chords, you know, it just like makes you go, ah, all's right with the world. <laughs> Thank you, James. Sarah, what do you think? Well, I'm with John and James, actually. It's, um, this song is one of my favourite all-time winners um, in the whole of the time that I've ever been watching Eurovision. And I have to say, I think the Portuguese media and, the, and all the journalists that were there at Festival Cansal knew that Portugal were onto something the night that this won. They could see that little gem there. That it's a quiet little song, you know, one solo singer doesn't need gimmicks to make it memorable. 
and sure enough it went there and it's captivated practically the whole of Europe and I'm not surprised and there's a lovely lovely gentle song which people can associate with even in even in a foreign language you know it didn't need to be translated to English to make you know, to give it that special feeling to people um yeah you know I was just captivated as captivated as much as most all of Europe was with it and I'm not surprised that it did as well as it did but wow you know Portugal waiting all those years for that win and then they go and win big um, and I think it's richly deserved for a nation that had been waiting all that time. Totally agree Sarah thank you. Mm -hmm. Richard anything else to add? Like everybody else it's Salvador you know um their, he is one of my favourite winners. I look back to Kiev and I just remember the rehearsals when we would go and stand in the hall and there'd just be a line of grown men sobbing because it was that special. Um, and it wasn't just us, there was friends of the website there as well, but it was something special, whether it was Louisa performing it, whether it was Salvador performing it, and then in the final one, it one where it was Louisa and Salvador, and then I was with John in the hall that night and then we've got Portuguese people around us sobbing their hearts out because it's the first <laughs> time in history that they've won it. It was just amazing, an amazing feeling. He was a de well-deserved winner. You, you know, you can't take it away from him. Absolutely fantastic. Exactly, I have to agree. I was with James as well. We were in the arena and we were chanting, but towards the end, like Portugal, Portugal, all the arena was chanting and we're out of our seats and it was such a, such an emotional moment and it was the right winner at the right time. And I'm just happy that all Europe and not only Europe fell in love with Amar Pelos Deutsch. Yes, so that was it. That concludes our review of the national final Festival de Cancel 2017. Thank you everyone for watching us, for staying, and in, I hope you enjoy our comments. And we're gonna say goodbye for now, but remember to follow us on our social media platform on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. And of course, go check our Eurovision website, eurovisionireland.net, for all the coverage news about Eurovision, Junior Eurovision, Turk Vision, any kind of news, all kinds of everything Eurovision related, because that's what we are, all kinds of everything Eurovision. So it's time for us to say goodbye from John. Bye, folks. Stay safe. James. Bye, everyone. Take care. Sarah. Bye, everyone. Take care. And Richard. Bye. Look after yourselves. And from me, Bogdan, thank you again for watching us, staying with us. We appreciate your support. Until next time. Bye, everyone. Stay safe.